Uh, hello, you're welcome to my platform. I am Dr. Sandra Nabukalu and I am a surgeon. I hope you become aware and sensitized about the different surgical conditions. Today's video is about diabetic ulcers. By definition, diabetic ulcers are deep spreading ulcers that occur in patients with poorly treated diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus, by the way, is a medical condition that is characterized by high blood sugar levels. For example, your fasting blood sugar levels are going to be equal to or more than 7 millimoles per liter or your random blood sugar levels are going to be equal to or more than 11.1 millimoles per liter. When you have diabetes mellitus, it is usually because your pancreas produces little or no insulin, a condition we call type 1 diabetes mellitus, or that the cells or the tissues of your body are not responding to insulin, a condition we call type 2 diabetes mellitus, insulin resistance. By the way, insulin is supposed to drive sugar or glucose from your bloodstream into the tissues, into the cells, because these cells and tissues need this glucose to carry out their activities. When you have diabetes mellitus, you're going to suffer from some of these complications. For example, you're going to have poor blood circulation, nerve damage, and susceptibility to infection. Poor blood circulation is usually a result of the changes that occur within the blood vessels, especially the, the large and small arteries that supply your organs and also the extremities. These changes include an increase in the deposition of fats within the walls of these arteries and so the walls of the arteries will not be able to expand and become elastic. They are going to become firm and rigid and hardened and thickened. The lumen are also going to become narrowed and at some point get blocked or get occluded, get obstructed. This reduces the amount of blood that goes to the areas supplied by that artery and the cells are going to die off, get eroded, and we form an ulcer. Nerve injury results also from poor blood supply because remember if you have changes happening in the blood vessels that supply the nerves, you're also going to have death of the cells of the nerves. The sad bit about this is that the patients will not even feel pain when they get injuries. Susceptibility to infection usually comes from the inability to recruit the neutrophils and the macrophages, the cells of your immune system, to ward off the infection if there is any infection going on. Also, these cells, the neutrophils and the macrophages, are also going to have a reduction of response to the signaling mechanisms, the signaling chemicals coming from the infecting germs, especially the bacteria. And so they will not be recruited to ward off this infection. The common sites that are affected are the plantar aspect of the foot, that part of your foot that touches the ground when you're walking, majority of the time is the one that is affected. The legs, the upper limbs, the back, the scrotum and the perineal region. The inherent nature of the diabetic ulcer is that it usually starts as a minor injury. For example, ingrown toenail, a blister or a small cut or a puncture wound. And the patient will not notice this injury until after some days when the injury has become big. It has formed an ulcer, which is usually a deep ulcer, exposing the tendons, ligaments, muscles, nerves, the bones as well. The floor will contain some dead tissues, some dark black tissues with some pus and will be very foul smelling. The edge of the ulcer is going to be also edematous and inflamed and the outline of the ulcer is also going to be irregular. Sometimes there is an association of death of the fingers and the toes and they also become black and this might require amputation or disarticulation. Even the feet and the leg can die off and then we need to do amputation of the affected foot or leg. Investigations include blood sugar levels, that is fasting and random blood sugar levels, a discharge study for culture and sensitivity, 
We also do a biopsy of the ulcer. We also do HbA1c estimations. We also do Doppler scans to, to look out for any occlusion of the blood vessels. We also do x-ray looking out for bone infections. Management entails stabilizing your sugar levels using insulin, nutritional supplementation with iron, vitamin C, and protein-containing foods, antibiotics tailored by the culture and sensitivity results from the BCI study. We also do surgical debridement where we cut away all the dead tissues and we do daily ulcer dressing. And after some time, we do skin grafting and skin flaps. If we have any death of the fingers or the toes, we do disarticulation. And if the entire limb or the entire leg or the foot has been affected, we do amputation. Prevention entails daily foot inspection. Please look at your feet every day and inspect and look out for any ingrown toenails, any blisters, any cut injuries, any injuries going on. Because this can actually transform into an ulcer if not, not managed on time. We also recommend that you wear properly fitting shoes. Please avoid loosely fitting shoes or tightly fitting shoes. There should always be half an inch between the tip of the shoe and the end of the toes when you're wearing that shoe. We also recommend that this shoe should always have support of the arch of your, of, of your foot, that curve within your foot. It shouldn't be left hanging, especially in, which can also happen in the setting of high heel shoes. Please avoid high heel shoes. Avoid trauma to your feet, to your area, especially to the extremities, the fingers. Avoid, avoid injuries because this can actually become an ulcer. Avoid smoking. The most important part is please avoid being a candidate of diabetes mellitus, especially the type 2 diabetes mellitus because this can be avoided. Please make sure that you have a healthy weight. This can be achieved by daily exercises. By the way, we always recommend that you exercise your bodies at least 30 minutes a day for five days in a week. For children, we recommend one hour a day. But for adults, we recommend 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Please have a healthy diet. And this entails plenty of vegetables and fruits, plenty of protein, low-fat diet. At least your diet should be predominant in those foods. Yes, yeah, so that is what I had for you. Thank you so much for listening to me. Please share my videos and also subscribe. See you in my next video. Bye.